Hey, what's up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros, and today we're going to be doing a $100 gaming PC. You heard that right, and we're bringing back our good old friend, the Dell Optiplex. But before we get into this video, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Gigabyte's Z390 Aorus Ultra is a beautiful motherboard designed to help you build a powerful PC based around an 8th or 9th gen Intel CPU. It features an advanced thermal design with direct touch heat pipes and their 12 plus 1 phase digital VRM solution to help you keep your overclocks rock solid. If you want to get the most out of your next Intel gaming PC, please check the link in the description down below to learn more and pick one up today. Thanks again to Gigabyte for sponsoring this portion of today's video. Okay guys, so what we have right here is a Dell Optiplex, and I know you've seen countless videos about Dell Optiplexes on YouTube, but we decided to do a new PC build using the Dell Optiplex because we wanted to test out this graphics card deal we found on eBay. So the reason that we wanted to use this 560 was we got it off of eBay for a really good price. We paid a little over $30 for it. We think that it's power color based on the Dragon, but oddly enough, it only has one DVI out. That is the only display out it has, maybe because it was a mining card or something like that, but we tested it, it works well. So it's a four gigabyte card and everything. It's a 560, which is still a respectable card for a build like this, so. So what we're gonna be doing in this video and compared to the normal time lapse that we do, we're gonna do a step-by-step -step guide because literally all you have to do is one, if you get this specific card, you're going to need a PCI adapter, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then two, all you gotta do is install the graphics card. And if you wanna upgrade it to an SSD, you can. We'll show you how to do that as well. But it's a pretty straightforward guide. So how about we go ahead and put this thing together and then show you how she performs. So as Matt said, this is an Optiplex 7010. These come in a few different form factors. This is basically the full size tower or mid size tower. They also have a small form factor one. Keep in mind, if you do a small form factor one, this card would not fit. You're gonna need one that has low profile brackets. So at that point, we would suggest going with something like a 1030 or a 1050. Still pretty equivalent cards um, and you know, somewhat equivalent cost on eBay. But for this one, we got the i5-3470, which is a quad core processor. We have two eight gig sticks of crucial RAM. So this was probably upgraded at some point to whomever sold it to us on eBay, but 16 gigs of it, which is pretty awesome. Two eight gig sticks, we have dual channel running. It's a decent speed. I mean, it is DDR3, so it's older, but honestly, 16 gigs is about what we use in all of our new gaming PCs. Still have an original power supply, which is all you're gonna need for pretty much any card you throw at this. Any card that you're gonna throw at it that needs more than this, you're probably not doing a good idea. And then lastly, this also came with a 500 gig hard drive. It's just a Western Digital Blue 7200 RPM. We do highly recommend going with an SSD, but for this budget, we just counted the 500 gig hard drive that came with it because we were trying to keep it all under a hundred dollars or right around a hundred you can pick these up kind of in the price range of 40 to 70 dollars typically for the 7010s just depending on what all it comes with some people add more ram some people take away storage some people have it come with windows so you're going to pay different amounts based on what you have use the link in the description down below their affiliate links they do help us out it'll bring you to this the ebay page of all the 7010s if you want to buy one you know don't forget to do that but we're going to show, go ahead and show you guys how to throw in this graphics card so that you can get gaming so as we mentioned the version of the 560 that we have does require this little guy right here. And for those who don't know much about gaming PCs, this is external power required to give this graphics card enough power to run at its full speed. Uh, you can't really run this card without it. We actually tested it to make sure. But what you'll need to get is one of these little guys, which again, we will link in the description down below. This is a SATA to six pin adapter. So basically it takes this connector, which is normally used for things like hard drives, SSDs in a PC, and adapts it to this little connector that goes right into the graphics card slot. So you can just plug her in right here and boom, connected. So what we're gonna do real quick is we're going to put this adapter into this PC case. Now, normally in the Optiplexes, the SATA powers are running off the hard drive already or SSD if you do upgrade it. So all we really need to do is take this and plug it in right here. Very straightforward, very simple. And then what we're gonna do is when we do install the graphics card, we're gonna plug that in and we're up and running. So installing a graphics card in Optiplex is pretty easy. There's this little tab right here push it in, it'll pop out, and then you'll have access to these PCI slots. With this card, it is a two lane card, even though we only have a DVI out, we have two lanes here with these two little notches. So what we're gonna do is in the topmost slot, this is the 16X slot, which has the blue coloring on it. We're going to go ahead, put the card in, and make sure it's lining up with the slot, and then it's as simple as pushing it in until it clicks. And then with this very handy method of the Dell Optiplex, all you have to do from here is Latch it and boom, the graphics card is installed and it's wow. not gonna go anywhere. And then lastly, as I mentioned, again, PCI power. All you gotta do is take this connector, go here, 
click, boom, push it out of the way so when you put the side panel back on, it doesn't mess anything up. We'll go ahead and grab the side panel just for demonstration's sake and go boop, boop. Is this a gaming boop. PC? Wow. There's a gaming computer. This thing will go ahead and run most of the games you want to play. But again, keep in mind with this one graphics card, all you have is this video out. Now, it may be tempting to use some of these right here. It's not going to work. You're only limited to one monitor with this graphics card. so. Keep that in mind, it's one of the compromises with this thing being so cheap, but if you're someone who just games and wants to game on a single monitor, this thing will perform pretty damn well. So how about we go ahead and throw it on our benchmarking machine over here and uh, see how it performs. All right, guys, the first game we are going to be testing is good old Fortnite. And we're going to be running on Pro Settings 1080p. Ideally, this is going to be a great little setup for running 60 plus FPS on pretty much any esports title. We're going to dive into a Team Rumble match and just see what kind of performance we can get. All right, guys, we are in Fortnite right now, and we're going to drop at the agency. Uh, right now, we're hovering around 100 FPS. Ideally, with this setup, you're probably going to want to lock it to about 60 FPS just to eliminate any stuttering you might get. But like, look across the board here, we're getting pretty easy even distribution from the CPU and GPU, uh, close to 100% at both times. So we're getting a pretty evenly balanced build here. So ideally the 560, this might become a new meta card to go with if you're building a uh, Optiplex upgrade, uh, definitely worthwhile. And as we are coming in right here, let's pick up the shotgun. We'll see what the frame rate settles down to. We're getting well over 100 FPS. Now, the only downside, again, as we mentioned with this system, is the fact that it only comes with one DVI out. If you do want to look around and maybe spend like $50 or $60 on a normal 560, that would probably still work just the same in this system. Um, it comes with extra display out, because you know in the future you may want two monitors, that sort of thing. It might be worth doing. But if you're just giving somebody their first like gaming PC, Having just DVI out isn't the end of the world. As I try to move around this map and find somebody, which is becoming very difficult, uh, the frame rate is still averaging well over 100 plus FPS. It is dipping below that occasionally, but this is more than playable. Um, you may run on high refresh rate off a DVI monitor. You can find some that would support it, but um, ideally you're probably gonna be stuck with like a 1080p 60 hertz display if you are gonna be gaming on this thing. So just locking it to 60 would be more than enough to uh, be able to run this setup. So, oh, there he is. Hey, what's up? Boom, there we go, nice headshot right there. But yeah guys, the frame rate is, well, pretty dang solid. I mean, if you were playing Fortnite on pro settings, this would be more than enough for most people. So I can consider Fortnite success and I'd be willing to bet most of the other games we're gonna test will run pretty well. The only game I'm kinda worried about is Modern Warfare, but we'll go ahead and test that right now and see exactly how it does. All right guys, the next game we are going to be testing is Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Now this system is ripping and roaring right now because this is going to max this thing out. We are gonna dive into a deathmatch. Now, I know people are saying, why not play Warzone? Zone, but we're gonna play deathmatch because we want to get a consistent run to be able to test this uh, Warzone is a little bit more demanding than the actual game so do keep that in mind uh, but it depends on the scenarios also so we'll go ahead and dive into this match and then we'll see how this thing performs we are running on like normal low settings 1080p all right guys we are in modern warfare now we are running on 1080p medium settings and this is probably where the system is going to have a little bit of trouble uh, we are getting 60 fps but in some areas we are dipping below 50 so we might want to go back into it and lower some of the settings here to see if we can achieve 60. so ideally we might want to go through and change all these normal to low uh, get rid of some of these uh, bullet impact things blah, blah blah we'll hit apply we'll see what this does to it um, still looking at around 50, 60 ish FPS. We'll try to run around and get some kills and see what we average. But ideally, you might have to drop the render resolution on this one to get a achievable uh, frame rate. It does look like the 560 is actually the bottleneck here, so uh, which was kind of surprising. I thought it would have been the i5, but it does look like this little uh, 560 does have some limitations after all. And I know this game is very VRAM dependent, so even just four gigs of VRAM, uh, some games tend to suffer. But Things are settling a little bit higher over 50 on all those settings, so we might have a uh, decent combo here. But yeah, guys, this is playable, okay? It's not gonna be ideal for this setup. Modern Warfare is a newer game that can cause some issues with older hardware like this, so do keep that in mind. But, I mean, it is technically playable if you wanted to go with a configuration like this, and I almost ran into that claymore. Aha, you didn't get me this time, buddy. But yeah, guys, I think this is more than playable. Um, let's go ahead and test one more game before we wrap this thing up, if I can kill this guy. Nope, got shot in the head. All right, that's it. 
All right, guys, the last game we're going to be testing is Overwatch. We're going to dive into an arcade match, team deathmatch, and just kind of get some decent uh, benchmark numbers. We are going to be running this on medium settings just to get a really good um, average FPS because ideally with an eSports setup, you're probably going to be running on low medium settings to get the most frames possible. And again, this system is targeted at eSports titles. So let's go ahead and dive into Overwatch and see what we can get. All right, guys, we are now in Overwatch, and we're just going to play as Soldier 76. So um, ideally, you're going to get over 100 FPS, around 90 plus with this game. Um, it is an eSports title, pretty easy to run. It looks like the 560 is the bottleneck right now. So in theory, you could upgrade it. But overall, I think this is actually a pretty balanced combo, if I can actually not die and kill some people. Um, I, I'm pretty impressed with this overall. Hey, buddy. Oh, uh, got somebody. Oh, God. Nope, that's not what I wanted. We're gonna hide back here a little bit and do one of you. And do one of that. Oh, run. Okay, that didn't work out very well. But yeah, guys, this is more than playable in Overwatch, which we kind of expected. And if you uh, manage to get a Valorant key, which hopefully we can at some point, this would be a pretty solid little system to play Valorant. So hopefully if you want to see that video, stay subscribed and hopefully get a key. Uh, we are trying to get one. Um, we'll do a uh, budget Valorant PC at some point in here in the future. So be sure you're subscribed and hit that bell notification to know when that goes live. But yeah, guys, Overwatch, more than playable. Fortnite, more than playable. Modern Warfare, kind of playable on lower settings. So this is a pretty well-round PC for, you know what, $100? You really cannot complain. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so after doing some benchmarking, we were pleasantly surprised to see that for a hundred freaking dollars, we were able to play all the games that we like to play, honestly, on anywhere from medium to even high settings in some cases. The 560 is a pretty solid card for the money, especially that one that you could pick up for $40. We will leave a link to that specific listing down below, but keep in mind those may go out of stock at some point. The guy only has so many of them, so link down below to pick these up or some alternate suggestions, which we do also suggest you could up to like a 570 or maybe a 580 if you wanted to. Keep in mind, the higher you go, the more power the card's gonna pull in this power supply. When you do adapt it, there may be a chance that you may need a better power supply in the future, but just make sure you check what power supply wanted you have and then kind of do some calculations online there are some programs where you can do that overall this is a pretty awesome combo and the fact that you get it for a hundred dollars and give it to somebody who wants their first gaming pc makes it a really awesome choice and we like reusing stuff here at the toasty bros it's the best part reusing stuff that would end up in like landfills or recycling plants now you guys know what to get us for christmas just a few of these, you know, we could use them for our setups at home. Exactly. So if you guys liked watching us do this nice little easy PC upgrade, we also do live streams over here on twitch.tv slash toaster, where they should be flying across the screen right now. And honestly, we do all kinds of cool streaming content. We do gaming, we do live PC builds, are really awesome. And then we even just talk to you guys about tech related stuff. So don't forget to check that over there. Also, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you buy any of the parts down below, they are affiliate links, so they do help us. And we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> that was so fluid, Optiplex dude. Optiplex for the win. <laughs>